All right, welcome back to the drive through boys and girls. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. This is number 77 from 12.1, okay? Now, this is dangerous. I'm going to try to go above and beyond the call of duty here, which probably means I'm going to screw this up completely, so stay tuned. Um, the, te the, uh, the, the problem is right there in front of you for you to read. And we're going to try to go further than just sketching some of the isothermal curves here. Now, I want you to know that a really good class in engineering is thermal dynamics. That's how heat travels, okay? And it's very important when it comes to the structure of materials. Some materials transmit heat uh, easily, and that's helpful. And some transmit heat easily, and that's hurtful. And you get to learn all about that kind of stuff. So um, that's why I'm kind of picking to take my time on this. A key here is that the radius of this steel plate is only 10 meters. So if you think about this curve, okay, the base of it's going to be a circle with radius 10. Well, shoot, this should really look like this. All right. So there's our circular steel plate, OK? That thing has a varying temperatures over the plate. If you think about it, if you put in 0, 0, that's going to be the hottest, right, the hottest point on this plate. So. Um, you can think of the graph of this curve is going to be a paraboloid. Okay? And that literally is a graph of the temperature. Now, at no place is this temperature zero degrees. Okay? So if you think about it, if you put in 10 comma zero, um, Let's see, you're going to get at R equals 10. I think you're going to get T of 10 comma 0 is 525 degrees. So really, that's, that's the Z value here. This would be, um, this point right here would be 10 comma 0, no, actually, I got that backwards, that's the y, 0, comma 10, comma 525. But that's the only thing that's on our curve because we are limited to a radius of 10 meters. So kind of think of it that way, OK? All right, now, to find level curves, I'm going to set my t equal to different constants, OK? But instead of doing it that way, I'm going to solve this and make it look like a circle. So when I do that, you end up getting x squared plus y squared is equal to 600 minus t over 0.75. So there you can see that um, 600 minus t divided by 0.75 is equal to the radius squared. So then we know that 600 minus t over 0.75 has to be less than 100. So 600 minus t has to be less than 75. And so then you end up getting t has to be greater than 525 degrees, OK? All right, well, that'll help us kind of choose what kind of values to pop in for T. And so what I'm going to do, since it didn't state how many isothermal curves it wanted, and since I'm lazy, I'm just going to do four isothermal curves. So we will start them at 525, and we'll go up by 25s until we get to 600. Okay, so let me go on to my next page here. 
here's a uh, capture of what this curve looks like from um, I don't know from like it's not from Wolfram Alpha, but it's from a 3D grapher. I just Googled 3D grapher. I don't love Wolfram Alpha's 3D grapher, so I always pick that second one that I see. So once again, this is our equation. I just changed it a little bit. It's the same thing, okay? Um, and then. I'm going to pick T values of 525, and when I do that, I get R squared, okay, is equal to 100, and therefore R is 10 at that point, okay? Hopefully you understand that these isothermal curves are going to be circles. When I pick 550, you get R squared is equal to 66.7 and therefore R equals 8.2. Now maybe you're like, where on earth is he getting these R squared values from? Okay, if I just took this right here, if I put in, let's say, 525, 600 minus 525 is 75, 75 divided by 0.75 is 100, you get x squared plus y squared equals 100, and that means our radius is 10. So that's where I'm getting that from, okay? You could totally do it if you just wrote it out. If I put in 575 for my temperature, I get r squared is 33.3, .3, and r, therefore, is 5.8. And then if I put 600 in for my temperature, I get R squared equals zero, and I get R equals zero, okay? So these are the four isothermal curves that I'm going to graph. Or you can think about them as I'm graphing X squared plus Y squared equals 100. X squared plus Y squared equals 8 point, no, equals 66.7 x squared plus y squared equals 33.3 .3, and I'm graphing x squared plus y squared equals 0. Those are my four isothermal curves. Now once again this is where the experiment will go and fail a little bit because it's just so hard um, to, to draw these circles well but here, here's 10 and there's five. So my first one, R equals 10. On my second one, R is closer to 10 than it is to five. Okay? On my third one, R is still above five. And then my fourth one is just this point. So um, the only thing I'm disappointed with is this little arc right here. That should be closer to that one. So what we're learning is that as far as isothermal curves, thermal has the word heat. Um, I guess the Latin for heat is kind of built into it. So these isothermal curves represent a constant change in temperature. But what they don't represent is a constant range in change of temperature. So, this steel plate is conducting heat. It, the heat is changing at a faster rate. It's getting hotter on the edge of the plate. And then as you travel towards the center, the change in heat um, isn't as drastic. And I hope that helps. That's a way winded answer to this question. And no one's probably even going to watch it. Boom. Oh.